In this session, all right, class. In this session, I teach you how to be finest DM, Dwarven Master. <laughs> Join our adventure party as we delve into the social and cultural aspects of our favorite game, all while enlightening our taste buds with a random craft beer. So, crack open your favorite bardic inspiration and roll initiative with us of Dice and Brews. Greetings, adventurers. Welcome back to another session of Dice and Brews. I'm Ben, also known as the Forever DM. It's been a while since we got to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We've had a ton of new NPCs and great cast of characters join us over the last several sessions. Shout out to all my players and for the adventures we've gone on together thus far. In other news, me and some of my players at the table have started a fantasy talk sports podcast recently called The Real Men Pretend. So if you're into laughs, fantasy sports, and fantasy in general, go check us out. You can find us wherever you uh, get your podcasts, the same as where you find Of Dice and Brews. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, TikTok, all the usual stuff, real men pretend. Our group has taken the rest of September off to take care of some personal things. We have a wedding coming up that uh, Deanna is planning and, and everybody's involved in or just going to attend a party. Uh, we had a move. Justin and Kate moved into their own apartment, so that was exciting, letting them get back on their feet and figure out how to live together by themselves. I don't think it will take long. They're great people. And I'm plotting and scheming and painting and printing to see what wonders I can come up with when our group does get back together in October. Getting to play with some monsters that I've never messed with before, which is new and exciting. I know, I know everybody wants to know what I'm scheming. And unfortunately, because most of my players listen to this podcast and we haven't had those sessions yet, I can't monologue about the nefarious plans I have. But stay tuned. Because we will, and it will be exciting. Can't wait to get to the conclusion of Sound of Wings Flapping Dream and their adventures into uh, the Dwarven Forge and the search for ne the nef Nephilim, uh, the metal that will hold the godly essence of the, of the past gods. So that's exciting as well. Uh, other than that, just kind of been going through the motions a little bit. Seeing what works, seeing what sticks, uh, cranking out these Of Dice and Brews episodes for you guys to listen to. I hope you guys are really enjoying these. Uh, go follow me on TikTok and YouTube. Also doing uh, giveaways for Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, YouTube. Once we get to the subscriber goals met, I'm giving out one of these awesome Mimic Dice Towers on each platform. Go check that out. Help, help me achieve my goals so I can give something back to you guys. And then we can keep going on on this. Of Dice and Brews has grown a lot in the last couple months. And I really appreciate all the feedback and all the, and all the participation that everybody has given. Please just keep doing that for me. It makes my job a lot easier to give you guys fresh content. And then also I like interacting with the community as such. Um, you guys are an awesome bunch of people. And just keep listening and keep downloading and keep telling me what I need to say. And what I need to do for you guys. Other than that, on the pre-funk, it's pretty short. I've been watching uh, Cobra Kai Season 5. That's okay so far. Uh, keeping up on House of Dragon, that's exciting. And then uh, diving into the, the Rings of Power and, and seeing what all that's about. Um, I'm not a huge Tolkienite. I know it deviates from the story quite a bit as I'm told by James and, and Lucas, who are Tolkienites. But, you know, just kind of take it what it is and, and go along for the ride and the adventure. You know, every DM spins their own web and makes their own story. So we'll see where that ends up and how that flows. Critical Role News was crazy, huh? That last session that they had. Well, I guess it was two sessions ago because they just had the follow-up session. But that's kind of nuts. I don't want to give any spoilers out there. But if you haven't caught up with Critical Role Campaign 3, there's uh, some interesting and crazy character development going on in that game other than that just business as usual excited to be back on this one-on-one -on -one conversation with you guys i know hopefully you guys like listening to my voice as much as i do but i'm bum, and we'll get right into it
have a pint, take a break, and relax. It's my favorite part of the show. So tell me, boys, what's on tap? All right, adventurers, today what's on tap is Voodoo Ranger New Belgium Juicy Haze IPA. Packed with bright tropical aromas and brilliant citrusy flavors, this hazy IPA wraps up with a pleasant, smooth finish. The specs on Juicy Haze is its alcohol by volume is 7.5%. The IBUs are 42 and it uses an American Hefeweizen style yeast. And let's let's crack this baby open and see, see what we're getting ourselves into here. Went for the little elongated opening on that one. It is very juicy. It is very tropical. There's definitely some citrus in there. It's not very smooth on the finish, though. It's kind of a little bit more bitter bitter on the finish, in my opinion. But it's, it's decent so far. Yummy IPAs. It's kind of nice to get back to that... Uh, that old, good old IPA once in a while. Just kind of recenter yourself. Woo sa moment. Just kind of unwind a bit. So, uh, what else? What else has been going on, really? I mean, you know, I've been doing a lot of printing and a lot of uh, painting of tiles, kind of setting my scenes. I feel that when I go into my games, I spend so much time doing other things and life kind of gets in the way of a lot of things that I don't really have time to just sit and paint and construct anymore. So really taking these next couple weeks of us being on a break from our D&D session and trying to get my main monsters painted, put some color on the table for my players, you know, bringing these worlds to life is very satisfying for a dm painting pictures for players in their minds is always awesome so when you get to paint pictures for them and their perspective is how the scene is is awesome that everybody has their own perspective but there's sometimes when you're in those battles or you have a specific thing in your head for an encounter as a DM, you want to just put that out there that this is how I'm envisioning it. This is how it should be envisioned. And you want to bring it to life as much as possible. And a little bit lately, I've been feeling like my my tables, uh, my my setup, my, my, my scenes are a little bit blah because it's just gray resin and black and white. So hopefully I can get some color on these monsters and stuff that I'm using and bring it to life for my players a little bit more and see how that goes and at, at the same time i know that they're fine with it they're enthralled as much as as much as can be and excited as much as can be as players for what i throw on the table but for me it just kind of feels only 50 percent there so i definitely want to bring to life these monsters and these situations that i present to them and see see what kind of new and exciting uh, moods and, and thoughts come out of their imaginations when they see color on on my miniatures and stuff like that. So are you guys ready? I'm going to give you the beginning part of how to proceed into being a dungeon master. These are a couple quick suggestions and advice that I think are integral to starting to be a dungeon master and transition from being a player to a dungeon master and things that you should think about and how to just get that journey started and, and not feel so overwhelmed. So we're going to jump right into the happy hour topic of how to become or your starting journey on becoming the next forever DM. The only thing I like more than brew is home brew. <laughs> All right, adventurers, we haven't had a homebrew section in a couple episodes, so this homebrew session I think is very fitting to the happy hour topic of our session today, and I wanted to spotlight the return of the Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish. This book is absolutely amazing, and it breaks down the steps for dungeon mastering Epic scenes and scenarios, giving you a guide to outline the most important information for your upcoming session or campaigns. Breaking the session down into eight steps 
giving DMs a more focused approach to outlining and developing the meat and potatoes of what really matters in your game. I would definitely recommend this book as a must-have over the DMG at this moment. It has helped me become more focused as a DM and not waste important time preparing for a session or game. You can get your copy off Amazon or Drive Through RPG. Just search Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Also, go follow Sly Flourish on Instagram or Facebook or just look him up online. He has some very awesome takes on his D&D podcast show. He's very informed, very entertaining at the same time. Also, if you plan on running any modules, go check out his website because he breaks down most of the modules that D&D 5th Edition has put out to this point and makes them a little bit more easier for new Dungeon Masters and Dungeon Masters to run them in less time preparing. Once again, go check out Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish. Come on, get happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, adventurers, the moment that you've been waiting for, or maybe the moment I've been waiting for, let's talk about being and becoming a dungeon master. Being a DM can and probably will be very overwhelming when you first think about it and take those first steps in undertaking your first one shot or campaign. But never fear, because just like everything, the more you practice, the more it becomes a little more familiar and you start to develop your own ways of being a dungeon master. The very first piece of advice I can give you as a new dungeon master is become a sponge, borrow, listen, go on YouTube, Watch videos on becoming a dungeon master. Take notes if that's how you learn. Just soak it all in. Everybody's going to have their own style of dungeon mastering. It's up to you to develop your own. But that first initial exposure to being a dungeon master, just take everything from anybody. And anything that has any value to you, borrow it. Take it as your own. If it appeals to you, if it feels like something that you can utilize as a tool in your tool belt as a dungeon master, then use it. Don't worry about retaining all the knowledge and advice that these people are going to give you because it's going to be vast. This moment is about getting acquainted, feeling out the dungeon master as a role and as a position at the table. Just like the players have their roles and their individual characters that they pilot, you're going to be piloting the world. You're going to be opening up yourself and becoming so many NPCs, so many monsters, the trees, the wind, the setting. You are everything. That is your role at the table. Being a dungeon master doesn't exclude you from the table. It makes you a part of the table. The players don't have a story to go on or an adventure to roll with unless you put it there for them to interact with. So that first step, that first initial a uh, shock into dungeon mastering just expose yourself to a whole bunch of dungeon masters and just soak up all the knowledge and advice that they have for you and just get acquainted with that language that they use and that attitude that they have and just get into the mindset and it's okay to take things from other dms this game is about borrowing it's the ultimate game of borrowing you're not going to have original ideas for the most part Yes, original ideas come along, but they're very few and far in between. You're not going to create anything that's nobody's seen before, but you can put your own spin on it, and you just need to be acquainted with how dungeon mastering or how people go about that. So borrow, steal from your other dungeon masters. Ask questions. Go on forums. Just become that sponge. The second piece of advice is to go get The Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish and read that book cover to cover. It's not a long read, and it's also available on audiobook. I have listened to that book several times just to refresh the simplification of being a dungeon master again and again. Mostly this book has such a good flow on how sessions are prepared and how simple session prep can be done and how detailed you can make it as well. So it can be as simple or as detailed as you want. The fact of the matter is that it gives you an outline and an outlook on a session and a campaign on how they're structured. That's exactly what you want when you're first starting out. A lot of the dungeon master guides and stuff like that, they really don't give you 
an outline on how how sessions are prepped or what you really need to prep as a dungeon master. This book, The Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, does that for you. From outlining your PCs, from getting your characters integrated into the story itself, fantastic locations. It gives you a breakdown on how you should view each session and how you should start it and how you should end it. And then once you get acquainted with that, you can realize how simplified planning a session really is. And then on top of that, once you get really familiar, you can make the system your own. Get rid of some things that you don't use. Put in other things that you will use. And then ultimately create your own Lazy Dungeon Master system. Most of all, this helps you and gives you a view on how to get started without being completely overwhelmed, without feeling like you're overmatched, like you bit off more than you can chew. This is a very complicated Uh, role you're taking on but this book and other people and other sources around you will make it as simple as anything and it's all about how much you want to put in and it's all about how much you can take on also just think about it as having fun that's the most important thing you're just here to have fun and as long as you do that and as long as you keep practicing your skills you will become the forever dm to your table as well Next piece of advice I have for you is over-preparation is going to happen. You're going to want to plan everything out that your players encounter, that they interact with, how conversations go, NPC responses. When you get into it, you're just going to prepare for so much that your head might spin. Just to realize when you start playing that you didn't need to do most of that. Your players are going to lead you in directions you never thought of. Even though you thought you had planned out every possible choice and outcome that they would even think about, this is totally okay. All you are doing is studying your world. So when those situations do come up, you already know what those things are and how they act. But don't force outcomes or lore onto players as the game progresses. If they didn't ask for it, Don't give it to them. The last thing that you want is for your players to feel like their adventure isn't their own. Like it's already predetermined. That causes and leads to boredom and that's where the murder hobos come out. As soon as your players don't feel like they have that agency, like they're not telling the story, like their DM has already written the script for this and it doesn't even matter their choices, that's when chaos ensues. And you know what? In this game, that kind of chaos is very bad. Keep it simple. Pick up one of those starter sets that Dungeons & Dragons has already set out. Read the small adventure and then make adjustments to see what's needed or not needed to fit the style of adventure that you want to run. What these starter sets give you is an outline on how an adventure is laid out mostly. Also gives you something that you didn't have to come up with all by yourself. Sometimes the most difficult thing in Dungeons & Dragons is knowing where to start especially if you don't have anything to begin with. It also gives you pre-generated characters that are already tied to the adventure. So you don't even have to worry about new players and character creations or how they're all fit into the story. Or if you're really into running your own adventure, don't go crazy and flesh out the world start to finish. Start with the town or an area that has a problem and then see how the story progresses. This way, you don't over-prepare and all your prep can stay focused on what the players are interested in. There's no worse feeling in my mind, than prepping this whole world and fleshing out all these organizations and all these places that players can go for all that to be wasted on an NPC that you only wrote two lines on. And it's not wasted. That's just what the players are interested in. So start small. Plan a town that has a problem with a couple NPCs. See what the players want to do. Let them lead you and show you what you need to prep to be prepared for the next session. Take it a session at a time. You can have overarching plot lines and maybe a goal on where you want to start and where you want to finish. But how you get to the point A to point B, leave that up to the players. Collaborate with them. Ask them what they want. Make sure that you're on the same page as your players at all points in time. That way, the collaboration of storyteller to storyteller in your group at your table is still fresh. It still feels fun. And it also ultimately leads to the most epic adventures. Also, start with smaller groups. They're better. Don't go crazy with your playgroup right off the bat. 
get used to balancing three to four players max. That way you can tell a story and practice balancing the player backgrounds and what they need and what they want before you add bigger groups. Having too big of a group right at the beginning when you're starting a DM, especially players with various experiences at your table, can lead to some very tricky situations. Make sure that you start off with a three to four player group max. If you can, do a two-player group. Make sure that you're comfortable balancing the needs and the wants of your players first and improving on the fly as a DM. Before you get into those five, six, seven player groups, start small, even with your play group. This leads me into my next thing. Make sure you have a zero session. This is where you communicate your expectations and get a good view on what your players expect and come to an understanding. Hey, I'm a new DM. Bear with me. I really want to try this. I really trust you guys, or I really want you guys to come along on this adventure with me, but I need you guys to be patient with me. I don't know all the rules. I don't know how this is going to go. Just communicate. Tell them what you expect from it. Tell them what you're focusing on. Tell them what you expect from them. Also have them tell you their expectations. The more you communicate with your group, especially as a new DM or any DM, the better your situation and your play experience will be. I know this from experience. If you don't communicate, then you feel like everybody's letting you down. How can they let you down if they didn't know your expectations? You have to tell them what's going on. Have feedback sessions. Ask them, what could I do better? What do you think I was strong at after every session? If they're willing to give you feedback, take it. Also, take it with a grain of salt, though. Constructive criticism. You have to be able to accept constructive criticism when you're DMing in order to hone your skill or your craft. By doing these things and having a zero session, it will fortify your position as a DM at the table, open lines of communication, and then on top of that, it will make sure that everybody's on board with having the same enjoyable play experience, which then leads to... Other players DMing because they know how responsive a table can be or understanding a table can be. It leads to making you the best DM that you can possibly be because your expectations and communication lines were open. Communication is key in this game. I can't say that enough. This last piece of advice that I'm going to give you is the biggest one in my opinion. Aside from having a zero session and communication, don't get attached to your content. The game is supposed to be collaborative storytelling. If as DMs we become too attached to our content and then we take away all the choices and agency that your players have, it creates hostile tables and toxic environments that often lead to player versus player or even worse, player versus DM. And those tables are no good. And those campaigns often don't last very long. And then on top of that, people start dreading and dropping out. Don't get attached to your content. Just know... That your players are going to kill your monsters. They aren't going to go the way you want them to go all the time. That the situations that you place in front of them aren't going to aren't gonna have the outcomes that you want them to have. It's their story too. Tell it with them, not against them. I can't stress it enough. This is their story too. This is not just yours. Don't get too attached to your content. Just because you put all this effort into a, a, an epic scene where your big bad evil guy got killed in two rounds, that's fine. Let it happen. Give them that victory. Make a better one next time. Make a stronger one next time. Don't, don't, don't take away their agency. Don't take away their choices. If there's a cliff and they want to see what's on the other side of that cliff, allow them to try to get over there. Don't make it impossible. Make it hard, but allow them to try. And if they succeed... Make it up. Tell them what's over there. It could lead into some really awesome experiences and really awesome storytelling. Just don't pigeonhole them into playing a role in your storybook. Make the storybook everyone's. That's the key to a successful D&D table. As long as your collaborative storytelling, as long as everybody feels like they're an important part at the table then you have feedback, then you have camaraderie, then you have relationship building, you have positive experiences. As soon as they feel like they're not integral part of this story or their choices doesn't matter 
or even if they roll natural 20s on their dice, as soon as they realize or figure out or feel that they don't matter in the story, you lost them. They're gone. And then they'll do everything they can to make themselves a part of your story or they'll just drop out and then you don't have a table at all. Can't stress this enough. DMs. I know we do a lot of work. I know it's going to feel like a lot of work. I know a lot of your lore is not going to go noticed by your players because they just don't care about it because it's not a prominent part of their adventure. That doesn't mean it's for not. That doesn't mean you're not appreciated. But do not get so attached to your content that you sacrifice or sabotage your table because of your choice. Don't get too attached to your content. I'm a huge victim of this. I guarantee you. There's been plenty of times at my tables when I put in so much effort to create this masterful encounter and I feel like it ended too quickly and I try to spin it into something else and it just becomes dull, boring, insufficient, not challenging at all. And it creates chaos and toxic environments. It's not cool. It's not fun. Work with your players and don't get too attached to your content. I guarantee you'll have a better time at this game. And then ultimately your job as a dungeon master will be so much easier because then you don't feel like it needs to be something. It will just be something that it's supposed to be instead of feeling like this moment in time should be so epic. Make things epic with your storytelling. I should say make things epic with your storytelling with your players. Your content by itself doesn't have to be epic. All right, adventurers, it's last call. Once again, we were reviewing New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA. The Voodoo Ranger is 7.5% alcohol by volume. It's IBU was 42 as a number and it has an american half of bison yeast once again uh this is a very citrusy very tropical juicy haze ipa it's very juicy it's it's it packs a punch in your mouth and it tastes full it's a full ipa it doesn't have the smooth aftertones that it are uh, advertised in this, and it kind of has more of a bitter bite to me. To me, that's what's going to get it to that three mark for me. This is a very drinkable, a very awesome IPA. I'm going to rate it a three out of four for this What's on Tap session. Definitely something that I will look forward to picking up again and sharing with friends. A nail in the hand is worth two in the keg. Just to wrap this episode up, this is our introduction, our DMing 101 tips and tricks that you need to get started as a DM. This is not the full-fledged course. Once you get these things going on and you practice them, your job as a DM and your fun in le levels will increase immensely, I promise you. DMing is a skill. DMing is not something that you can just have. I mean, some talented people just have things. So, I mean, yes, you can have DMing as if you just have it, you have it. But you can practice this. You can hone this. Anybody can be a DM. If you like playing D&D, if you like creating things, be a DM. It's not as hard as some people think. It just takes time and practice. And it's not just the mechanics. The mechanics, nobody knows front and back besides rules lawyers people have that ability too most dms don't know everything we catch matt mercer from critical role going back on some of his rules and looking at books consistently it just happens it's okay to look at the books it's okay to stop and take a break and say oh what was that mechanic again surround yourself with players that understand surround yourself with a helping support system communicate as long as people know you don't know all the rules then they can't hold that expectation over your head i myself as the forever dm have no idea what all the rules are or all the spells are nor do i want to that's way too much for me i just want to tell epic stories i'm here to help you become a more efficient storyteller and all you have to do is just get started find yourself a group to play with tell a story 
The mechanics will come with practice. The improv will come with practice. You'll get better. You'll know what you have to prepare for sessions. Everybody's different. Monsters, CR systems, all that stuff that becomes overwhelming and daunting in in the mechanic aspect of this game, that gets better with practice. Just start. And the best way to start is just to play. Also, go follow these little tips and advice that I've given you and just see if you even want to do it after, after you do a couple of these things. Read an adventure. Read a starter set. Read the Lazy DM. Just go check it out. And then if you're still excited, jump into it because the best thing you can do is just get started. Mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes happen in life. You get over it. There's no real consequences in this game. The goal is to have fun. Have fun. As a DM, as a player, as your play group, communication, and have fun. And with that said, adventures, until the next time that I, we can sit down and have a conversation about how to become the better forever DM, life's an adventure. Roll with it.